So he says, are ye even yet without understanding? And when they still can't grasp the message, he says, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? In other words, his immediate disciples were incapable of receiving the whole truth. So he promises somebody else. And that somebody else he describes as the spirit of truth. And that this spirit of truth was to guide mankind into all truth. And as you emphasize the word all, all means all. Meaning every problem affecting mankind. This spirit of truth will give you a solution, answers to your problems. In 2000 years, the spirit of truth that the Christians say is the Holy Ghost. I think if you put the phone down, it might uh, say well, a little bit of a further time. Mr. Nigel's permission. Just show it off. Put the phone down. Down is it, Mr. Nigel's permission. Just press the button and put it on. Like all truth, all is more than one. And mankind at the present moment is confronted with numerous problems for which Christianity or Christendom or I, I can say your church, if you claim to be inspired, you haven't got the answer. Number one, you have a problem of alcohol in our own country. I want to know what new truths this Holy Ghost told you about alcohol, how to solve this problem. We are facing a problem here. Among the whites of South Africa, there are 200,000 white alcoholic drunkards. Among the colors, there are five times that as of any other nation in this country. Gambling. Last year, South Africa spent 2,000 million rand on gambling, 2,000 million on alcohol. What is the answer? I'd like to know what the Holy Ghost, you know, or the spirit, or spirit that Jesus Christ promised, that he will guide you into all truth, and all is more than one. I only want one. One new truth. The spirit of truth gave the Christians in 2,000 years. I only want one. Another problem we are confronted with, there is the problem of surplus women. In your own motherland, in America, in England, oh, in England, in France, in Germany, there are 5 million women who can't get husbands in Germany. There are more than 3 million women in England who can't get husbands. Problem of surplus women. What did this Holy Ghost tell you about that? Problem of race. What new truths did the Holy Ghost give the Christian world in this past 2000 years about solving racial problems? Which Jesus Christ didn't already give you in so many different words. New truths. I says not one. I'd like to share that when your time comes, I want you to give me what new truths that you have been learning from the spirit of truth which Jesus Christ was not able to teach the disciples. New thing. Now, this spirit of truth, Jesus says, I'm discussing this because you use these verses. It was not proving the Bible, it was trying to exclude a new revelation. I say that this spirit of truth is Muhammad. This comforter or helper is Muhammad because again in John the same chapter he says nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient for you that I go away for if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if I go I will send him and when he's come he will convict the world in respect of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and so on again I say that that comforter is again Muhammad it is not the Holy Ghost. Now, in your general Bibles, you keep on, they keep on, the Christian world is using the word Holy Ghost. I don't know whether the American Standard Version uses the word Ghost at all. Thank God. It's an improvement. You see, they keep on using the word Ghost. Now, when you keep on using the word Ghost, it creates that ghostly atmosphere. I understand. Something flimsy, uh, like uh, some spirit in the night. But now, the word spirit is not appropriate in that place and in every other place than the word ghost. Now it says, the spirit of truth. Now, the word spirit is used by John again in the epistle of John, in his own book, in his own writings. He says, beloved, 
believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So, a false prophet is a false spirit, a true prophet is a true spirit. He is using the word spirit synonymously for prophet. False prophets, false spirits. True prophet, true spirit. And the title of Muhammad in Islam is An Nabi As Sadiq Al Wahdul Amin, the prophet of truth, who is true to his promise, trustworthy, faithful. This is his title in Islam, the prophet of truth. So the spirit of truth is the prophet of truth. And this prophet of truth guided mankind to all truth. All truth means any problem you come with. He said, now what about this problem? What about that problem? I will give you an answer from the teachings of Muhammad that this is the answer he has given for your problem. It might not go down well with you because we are used to certain types of behavior, mentality, grooming. It's difficult to get out of the group. But you can't help agreeing that look, this is the answer that Muhammad gave. Whether you like it or you don't like it, he's given answers to all your problems. It says again, if I read the same verse to you, with a little emphasis on the pronouns, it will make it more distinct and more vivid that Jesus Christ was talking about a man, not a spirit, meaning that ghostly something, that intended, intangible something. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be? When he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things shall he hear, that shall he speak, and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come. He shall glorify me. Can you imagine eight masculine pronouns for a ghost? The spirit. He is emphasizing that will be a man, a man, a man, a man. Eight. There is not another verse in the whole Bible. I checked it out. There is not another verse throughout the whole Bible, encyclopedia of 73 books of the Roman Catholics and 66 of yours. There is not a single verse with eight masculine pronouns or eight feminine pronouns or eight neuter genders in one verse. Here. Yeah. Jesus Christ is going out of his way to tell you that the man who is coming will be a man, a man, a man. And if I don't go, he won't come. It's conditional. If it is the spirit, the spirit was there all the time. If you remember, read Luke, that John the Baptist's mother, the mother of John, John the Baptist, while he was in his mother's womb, he had the Holy Spirit. <coughs> then Jesus Christ, he was helping his ministry by the help of the Spirit throughout. Then when he sent out his disciples on his, their mission of preaching and healing, with what did they heal people and what did they assist people? Except with the help of the Holy Spirit. And before Jesus departed, he called his disciples and he told them, he said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. They are authorized kings of the Holy Ghost, which fortunately your book says, Spirit. Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Now when he said receive, either they received or he was bluffing them. I believe that what he was talking about, they received. So it makes no sense when he says, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. But if I go, I will send him. If the comforter or the Holy Spirit is this spirit that is the third part of the Trinity, if that is what you have in mind, then that is being negative with the, with the condition that he has to go before it comes, and if he doesn't go, he won't come. Now, as far as the whole truth is concerned, see now, he says, and he will glorify me. He will be testimony of me. He will, that word, he will, what did he say there in your Bible? Uh, that when he is come, he will guide you into all things. He shall not speak from himself. For all things he shall hear, that shall, and he shall declare unto you this. He shall glorify me. Now Muhammad did truly glorify Jesus. You see, he says he shall glorify me. Glorify.